was here. Um, I'm going to read two pieces. First one is about aging, which I think I'm qualified to talk a little bit about. <laughs> it's, okay. Our history lost. This is no place for callow youth, those frolicking boys and girls. Not one honeybee comes here anymore, or hummingbird. What gardeners there were have long gone off. Rhododendrons droop, drop pink petals. Wizened pansies squash down, deep purple where once they had leaves. A tiger lily hanging on says to another hanging on, this pollen we have is useless, my friend. Too little left. Where will our beauty blooming come from now? God knows if there's any future here among these brittle twig thickets for the madcap young who race by, toss us a glance, race on, having other things in mind when you, I, all of this will be whished away soon and they forget how we blossomed. Mm. And the second piece, the last piece, is um, about human re uh, relationships between men and women. And I've written, uh, some of them work out and some of them are in trouble. <laughs> and I've written about women, from the women's point of view, this is from the man's point of view, um, about a relationship that is definitely in trouble. Her odd obsession. She likes her man in pink. <laughs> Wearing a pink apron, say, in the kitchen. Chopping lettuce and parsley for a salad with that peculiar pink dressing she always uses. Buys him pink shirts for his birthday, pink ties, or ties that have at least pink stripes in them, which he has agreed to put on, but without a smile. They sleep at night on pink sheets, pink pillows, in a bedroom wallpapered with too many flower clusters of that same color. Once he got pink eye, <laughs> which he swore was her doing. She doted on that infection in him. A beauty, she said. Then it took days to cure. But when she bought him shiny pink sneakers for his handball game played weekly with the guys, he finally put his foot down. <laughs> enough is enough. Pink is for girls, blue is for boys, since time immemorial. Don't you know that? Anger rising in his voice. Now, as she prunes her pink roses, picks some to create a floral centerpiece for the pink brocaded tablecloth at dinner, he wanders off from the garden as far as he can go, eyes longing upward to search for the bluest, bluest, bluest sky he can find. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Phil.